Hey everyone, welcome back here to Weather on the Go. My name is Hunter and we're going to be talking about your fall forecast of 2025 with your updated climate analysis. We're going to also look at your temperature and precipitation outlooks going from September through November of 2025. We're going to also look at your severe weather forecast for the fall, wildfire risk forecast, as well as your frost and freeze forecast going through the fall as well all in this video and much more. So if you are here, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel by subscribing, like the video, giving it a thumbs up and share it with a friend, family member and on social media. Hope everybody's having a great week out there so far. And we are looking here at the National Weather Service Climate Prediction Center's update here that was posted this August. And we're looking here at S, O, and N on the map. And you can see it there on the bottom, September, October, and November. Notice the blue bar goes higher. It goes up to about 53%. There's a 53% chance of La Nina conditions evolving once we go into the fall of 2025. There's a 45% chance and neutral conditions continuing in an extremely unlikely about 3% chance of El Nino. So we're looking likely at a weak La Nina, if not neutral conditions heading into the fall of September, October, and November of 2025. Now, if we do get into the La Nina conditions, there are variable uh, impacts to La Nina. There is a weak La Nina, there's a moderate La Nina, and then there's a strong La Nina. We're looking to be in a weaker La Nina state. So these could be a little bit variable at times, but just in general, you got a polar jet stream that lifts all the way up there to Alaska that allows some cooler air to spill southward from Canada into the northern and the northwestern United States. And typically for fall, this brings frequent cold fronts down from Canada into the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region. That's what we could see in this pattern. We also have a pretty variable Pacific jet stream that brings in moisture to the Pacific Northwest in conjunction with some of that colder air. And that could lead to an early snow in parts of the Pacific Northwest this late fall as well. And then we look here at drier spells across the southern tier of the United States and warmer conditions as well. And that trickles all the way over into the Southeast where we have the jet streams coming together in the Ohio Valley. That's where we tend to have have warmer conditions, but also wetter conditions really from the Southern Great Lakes region through much of the Ohio Valley and down into the mid Mississippi Valley. Again, that's what the cookie cutter La Nina pattern it's going to be variable because it's like a weak signal right now, so we're not looking at a huge strong La Nina by any means, and we could also continue with neutral conditions through the fall of 2025. So now let's go away here and look at your temperature forecast for September 2025 next month. It does look rather warm here from the Midwest, stretching eastward into the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. You can see this orange, and this is where we're going to see some uh, heat waves continuing through the month of September, and we also have heat continuing in in extreme fashion for the desert southwest and this will be above normal heat for areas of Arizona, Utah, into Colorado and New Mexico, parts of Southern California and West Texas. A lot of these areas have been hot, they've been dry as well and the drought will likely continue as we go through September. Drier ground heats up faster than wetter ground so that's why they're likely to bend a little bit warmer down there going into September. Further north into the Pacific Northwest and through the plains we're going to see a normal September as far as temperatures are concerned. We're not uh, leaning warm. We're not really leaning cool. We're just kind of kind of see a more of a normal September as far as temperatures are concerned there. Now we turn over to the September precipitation forecast and notice how it's kind of sporadic across southern Canada and the United States and not really any big outliers here of any uh, drier areas or really any wetter areas. If there were any takeaways from this, it does look like a pretty normal precipitation forecast standpoint as we go through the month of September of 2025. Maybe a little bit wetter there in Southwest Canada and the Pacific Northwest of the United States and into the Midwest of the United States. Although the tropics will have a big story, I think, in September of who gets the rainfall and who stays dry. Now, as we go into October of 2025, pumpkin spice season, and we could see a lot of heat building out west, and that will be transient further east into the Mississippi Valley, into the eastern U.S. as well. A lot of the United States in October will be experiencing likely 
basically an Indian summer, so an extension of the summer here, and that does mean some warmer than normal conditions. Slightly above normal in southern Canada, but near normal the further north you go into Canada toward the Northwest Territories and Yukon up there, again in northern Canada. Precipitation looks like a drier middle portion of the fall season, especially across the Mississippi River Valley, with the precipitation above normal favoring southwestern Canada and the Pacific Northwest, as well as Florida down here in the southeast coast. Again, continuation of the tropics and the tropical weather season. Could bring a lot of rainfall down to the state of Florida as we go into October. Finally, we go into November, and again, this looks warmer than it truly will likely be. Take out the orange here up into southern Canada. I think this November, we're going to have frequent cold fronts coming down from Canada into the upper Midwest that will bring probably more of a blue scenario, which means cooler air across these areas into Canada and northern United States. Warmest areas should be the desert southwest and along the southern tier and the eastern U.S. as we have a high-pressure ridge likely sitting here in a couple of these areas and that will be warming us up into the month of November. Storm track going to be very key. Looks like we start to pick up with above normal precipitation here during the last half there of fall from portions of the southern plains up toward the southwest Great Lakes including parts of the mid Mississippi Valley, upper Mississippi Valley region seeing a lot of precipitation. The Pacific Northwest will be active. The Northeast will be active. The drier areas will be the southeastern U.S. down toward Florida or California as we go into November of 2025. Now, we look at the fall season as a whole in all three months, September, October, and November of 2025, the warmest areas are ticketed to be the desert southwest and the eastern two-thirds of the United States, where areas in the plains, the Pacific Northwest, or southern Canada will still be slightly above normal when it's all said and done, but closer to normal than areas like I mentioned in the eastern two-thirds or the desert southwest. As far as precipitation is concerned, southwestern Canada looks to be the golden spot for a well above normal precipitation for September, October, and November on the three-month average. We'll also see some pretty active weather in the central U.S., driest areas again, the desert southwest, including California, and then over here into the southeast, although I think this could also be variable too because it depends if we have a landfalling hurricane. This could actually bend above normal in some local areas in the southeast when it's all said and done. Now we look here to the north at the polar vortex I know we're probably talking crazy here because it's going into the fall months, but the polar vortex, even in the fall, uh, has a bearing on the cold front that drops south across Canada into the northern United States. Not so much for September, but October. Notice this white area. This is actually cooler air pressing southward from Alaska, the Northwest Territories, Yukon, into the Arctic Circle, and all the way down. Now it's modifying cold air. We don't have a snowpack on the ground in the United States, but this is a signal that there's going to be frequent strong cold fronts coming down from the north into the northern United States like the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and the northern uh, United States in general in the month of October, and that could set up a volatile th threat for severe weather for one, but also bring some cooler air and some nicer lower humidity temperatures as well as we even go into the month of November. So we look at that here as we go through the fall months, and you can see that cooler air and those low pressure systems are really going to start diving southward once we go into October, but even into November that does continue. So frequent cold fronts coming from the north into the United States are going to be a norm once we get to the middle and late portion of the fall season and that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on. So here is my frost and freeze forecast for the fall of 2025 between September 1st and November 30th and you can see earlier uh, starts to a frost and freeze across the northern plains, the upper midwest, into parts of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes region there in blue and earlier frost and freeze is expected. In the white across the rest of the United States we're looking at a more normal start uh, frost and freeze start time here this fall and that is what we're looking at for that as far as the severe weather season goes for the fall between September 1st and November 30th and you can see we are above normal with our severe weather mainly east here of the Rockies especially the eastern plains into the eastern two-thirds of the United States outside of areas near uh, Vermont New Hampshire Massachusetts and Maine where it could be a little bit quieter or near normal near normal across the west but there you see the red color that is is well above normal severe weather season across the Mississippi Valley and then you see a secondary area there into southeast Alabama Georgia along the Carolina coastline and then much of the peninsula of Florida 
that will be tied to tropical systems that could get very close or that could make landfall. And this could produce a lot of land spouts and tornadoes and water spouts and stuff like that as we go deeper into the fall season. Here is the wildfire risk here that I came up with into the white that is very low of a wildfire risk. We've had a lot of rainfall in some of these areas, especially into the southeast at times during the afternoons. I know it's been dry in the mid-Atlantic, but any tropical system that will be making landfall will bring a lot of moisture to the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as we go later into the fall season. In the yellow across much of the central U.S., that's where we have a low risk for wildfires. And then in the orange up into the upper Midwest and a large chunk of the western U.S. in general, that's where a moderate wildfire risk is concerned as we're going to be drying out later in the fall season, especially in October across the upper Midwest and upper Great Lakes region that could lead to some spells of a wildfire risk. And then you notice a red color, that cherry color there from Montana through Idaho, Oregon into Nevada and California. That's a high wildfire risk. And that is where we could see a lot of dry conditions once we go deeper into the fall. That is for sure. So keeping an eye on the wildfire risk as we go deeper into fall. Now, like we mentioned, the hurricane season still continues into the fall of 2025 and September. Notice a lot of those hurricanes, they curve out to sea, but a few of them actually make it westward into the Gulf and even into the eastern United States. So hot zones in September this year will likely be Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. So keeping a very close eye on them. And then as we go into October, more homegrown systems from the Western and Central Caribbean making their way up either into the Gulf or crossing over Cuba going into the south southern part of Florida and then back across the Atlantic there. We're going to be watching that in October. And then once we get to November, the hurricane season is starting to wind down a little bit, but there still can be hurricanes in the Western Caribbean and parts of the Atlantic, but they are likely to be lower grade hurricanes, cat ones or twos versus like a four or five, much like we're seeing with Hurricane Aaron right now. So that is the hurricane season forecast. And here is my forecast for 2025 for the rest of the hurricane season. Uh, mountain name storms that I predict is 12 to 17. We've had a few already. The average of between 1991 and 2020 is 14. Name storm days, I'm forecasting 81. The average is 69. Hurricanes uh, that are going to form in the Atlantic, five to eight of them. The average is seven, so we're kind of right there near the average. Hurricane days, 32. We're slightly above the historical average, which is 27. Major hurricanes, two to four of them. Uh, Hurricane Aaron is already the first one, so we've already had one a few more possible. The average is three. Major hurricane days, 10 of them. We've already had a few and the average is seven. And finally, the accumulated cyclone energy or ACE points I have forecasted is 187, the above the normal, which is 123 on a 1991 to 2020 historical average. So that is my forecast for the fall of 2025. If you guys did enjoy the forecast, make sure to give it a like, a thumbs up, share it with a friend, family member, and on social media, and subscribe to my channel as my winter forecast will be produced on August 31st, 2025. 25. We do it on August 31st every single season, and that will be no different this year. So to tune in for that and daily weather forecast updates, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day out there.